Hello everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Tomorrow actually is Thanksgiving and I usually go live on Tuesdays to paint, but it's Wednesday. I was busy putting up my Christmas tree yesterday and doing a little bit of shopping and all of that. So we're just now getting to where we're going to paint today. So we're going to be painting this really cute little Christmas wheelbarrow with full of gifts. And I want to do a buffalo plaid, red and black buffalo plaid on the wheelbarrow itself. Um, and I'm going to be stepping out of my comfort zone today and using painter's tape. I know you guys have probably seen me do uh, white and black buffalo plaid on here before. And in the past, I've told you I hate painter's tape, and that's still true. <laughs> but there's a method that my friend Katie Tennis from Junk to Jewels uh, taught in our painter's clubhouse a few months ago. And I've just been, I've just been dying to try it out ever since. So I thought... Today, we're going to give it a shot. I don't know why I closed my laptop because I had a photo on here of the door hanger that I was going to go by. All right, so we're going to just start using our deco art paint. It's all um, Americana matte acrylics. Okay, so like I was saying, we are using deco art Americana paints. Um, the colors that I have chosen may are subject to change, but for right now, I've got primary red, true ochre, um, Hauser light green. Hauser medium green, and I'm going to maybe use some of this gold bright metallics. Um, it is just a really nice brassy gold color, so we may use some of that, and of course, we're going to use black and white, so um, let me grab all of that out here so that we're ready, and then the other things that I'm going to be using are frog tape and baby wipes, so hang in there, and we are going to do some red and black buffalo plaid on the wagon, and we're going to paint the presents and it's going to be super cute. So please forgive me if I don't answer a lot of questions in the comments like I normally do. I promise I always go back after the video and read all of those and catch up. So um, if I miss your comment, I will come back and do my best to answer it later. But this is going to like be a little bit intense as far as like I'm not going to be able to talk and, and answer questions like I normally do because it's going to be very detailed. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to start with the base coat color of our wagon. You can grab the template for this in my shop if you want to cut your own in paint or if you want to just purchase one of these that already has the lines etched in it you can go grab the blank um, in the shop on there if you're not a painter or have no desire to paint this but want to buy one of these painted we do sell them painted as well so there's a link for that as well so just say the word link and you can go grab it there this is the primary red color. We're just getting this whole thing painted red to start with. Not the whole thing, the whole uh, bucket part of the wheelbarrow. Red. Red and black buffalo plaid and white and black buffalo plaid have been super popular this Christmas. Um, I know I've got it all over my dining room right now and on my Christmas tree because I wanted to incorporate it into my Christmas decor. And so painting it can be a little bit intimidating. So that's why I thought it would be fun to do this on Facebook Live today and show you guys this technique. Like I said, I learned this technique from my friend Katie Tennis at Junk to Jewels. Junk is not spelled J-U-N-K. It's J-U-N-Q-U-E. So if you go to look her up, that's how you spell it. All right, we're gonna let that dry. And while we're letting that dry, we're gonna go ahead and paint like the, the little wheels and stuff like that. So. Let me get some black. Oh, and I forgot, we will also need gray. I forgot to get that color out. Let's see. This is dove gray. I suppose it will work. So we're just gonna paint the little wheel black. How many of you guys have painted buffalo plaid before? Do you use painter's tape when you paint your buffalo plaid? Or do you freehand it? Normally, I freehand it, but I wanted to try this technique, so what better way than being your guinea pig right here on Facebook Live and doing it that way? Katrina freehands. That's the way I've always done it before, Katrina, but I'm going to try this out because I love the way it looks. Um, the finished product, when Katie got done doing it, was it looked almost like watercolor or something. It was really sheer and pretty, and um, it just looked more like... It almost looked like paper or fabric had been decoupage onto the door hanger. And so I was like, ooh, I've got to try that because I love the texture that it gives it. But she uses a baby wipe. So that's what we're going to do today. So if you want to 
see how I do it and see how my guinea pig, t pig testing goes, um, then you can decide for yourself if you want to try it. All right, our, red's still, our red is still wet, so we're going to go ahead and paint the presents on either side here um, with the Hauser light green. Okay, um, I think these presents I had designated to do green with like yellow ribbons on them, yellow bows. So that's what why I'm painting it kind of weird right now. I'm painting around where the bows go. That's the cool thing about these etched blanks. Um, they have all the lines drawn in them so that you don't have to like draw anything. I could just was able to get started painting it. I didn't have to worry about getting my lines on there first. Super easy. I like this Hauser light green. It's kind of a lime green, but it's a little softer than your usual lime green and it covers pretty well compared to some other lime greens that I've used in the past. Okay, it's gonna look a little crazy at first because we don't have our bows painted, but I'm trying to stay inside the lines, so that's why I've <laughs> only got certain sections painted green. Um, okay. Put a quick coat, second coat on some of these spots. And then of course, when we go back and add like little detail lines and stuff later with the black, it will cover any of our little um, imperfections and things. Okay, while that's drying, we'll go ahead and paint the bow part, um, this true ochre color. And then later after the true ochre dries, we will put some gold on top of it. What a lovely sound. Oops, I dripped, dripped some of that yellow on top of my red. That's just, that's just the way with like acrylic paints, you usually don't have to do that. I don't know how it works like with oil paints or any other types, but the acrylics, you really don't have to wet your brush first. This is just kind of like a golden yellow, and I thought it would be a good base color to paint that metallic gold on top of. So that's the plan. It's gonna paint gold metallic on top of this true ochre color later to kind of give it a base color. So that, cause sometimes the gold tends to be just a little bit transparent. And so this kind of helps with that. If you're just now joining us, um, here in just a few minutes, we're going to be doing red buffalo plaid on the wheelbarrow part down here. And I'm gonna be using painter's tape and baby wipes for the technique. So if you've never seen that technique before, stick around, it's gonna be really cool. Um, and if it goes well, we may do black and white buffalo plaid on this middle present right here. Um, but we're gonna save that for last and just see how it goes before I start trying to do it in two different places. But right now we're just getting some of our other colors done while the red dries. Okay. Getting that laid on there. And that coat, the, the yellow, that coat doesn't have to be like super perfect because we're going to be covering it with the gold. So I'm not really worried about it. Okay, let's go ahead and do uh, white as our base coat on the present up here so that that will be done if we do decide to do uh, the buffalo plaid up here at the top. We will already be base coated if we do. Let's do this side, and then this one will have a probably a red bow. We're gonna paint it white first. And I'm doing all of this right now with like a one inch flat tip brush, in case any of you all were wondering. I just keep rinsing out the same brush and using it over and over again.
Okay. This is a little rough around the edges right now, but like I said, once we get all of our patterns on here and get like the black outlines and things done, it's gonna look fantastic. All right, our red is dry. We're gonna get out our frog tape. Maybe. How do you open this? There we go. There was little tabs that said open if I'd just been paying attention. Okay, this, this tape is, I think it's like an inch and a half, 1.4 inches wide. And it feels kind of dusty, like it's got something on it. Let me wipe it off. Okay, we're gonna start out with our tape going. Let me wipe that off, it's just some excess paint. With our tape going horizontal. I don't know why, that's just the direction I'm choosing. There's no right or wrong here. I just think that's what I wanna start with. So I'm gonna start by putting right along the top line of the wheelbarrow so that I know it's nice and straight. Now, we can get a second little piece of this and use it as our guide so that we get them the same width apart. So I'm just taking a little piece of that and laying it there as my guide so I don't have to measure or eyeball it. Now our next piece, we just line up along the bottom of the last piece. Push down nice and firm so that paint doesn't get underneath the edges. Now we can peel this up and move it down. And this little piece won't have to be very big at all. Okay, here comes the fun part. You ready? Okay, make sure it's pushed down really well. Okay, I'm nervous. Are you guys nervous? <laughs> Painter's tape in the past has not gone very well for me, so I think that's why I'm a little nervous. Oh, I've already got black paint. Let me get my baby wipe. We're not gonna use a paintbrush for this. We're just gonna use a baby wipe. My baby wipe's not very damp. These are like drying out. I need my, I bought some new ones, but I don't know where they went. So we'll just have to make this work. All right, we're gonna dip in a little bit of the black and we're just gonna smear. Oh, shoot. I think this is probably because my baby wipe's so dry, it's not looking exactly right. Yikes! Let me see if any of the other baby wipes are wetter. There we go. I set them underneath the edge right here so they'd be within reaching distance. All right, so I'm just going to go, okay, my paint was still damp enough I could lighten it up. So looky there, I'm like picking up a lot of the black paint and smearing it into other areas before it dried. So I think it's gonna be okay. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit more black paint and we're just gonna brush this on. I should have, hang on, let me put this little piece here so I don't get it all over the leg of the wheelbarrow. And because the baby wipe is damp and it's got that alcohol in it, it's kind of preventing all of the paint from sticking to the door hanger. So it's kind of thinning it out. You know what I mean? Is this making sense? Are you guys laughing at me? <laughs> Sally says I'm nervous for you. You've heard painting with baby wipes is better than a brush. Um, it kind of thins out the paint a little bit, so I really think this is gonna look super cool, even though I was freaking out just for a minute there about it. I think it's gonna look really awesome. Okay, so you ready? So while everything's still wet, we're gonna set our baby wipe aside. We're gonna pull up the paint, I mean the tape. Ooh, that line looks nice. We're just gonna set this tape aside and we're gonna reuse it. Oh, it's looking so good. Are y'all sprinkling in love? Because everybody needs to see this. This is the coolest thing ever. All right. And then while we've got our painter's tape out, I'm just going to reuse the painter's tape. And we're going to stick it down to do our next piece. Let me use my little guideline piece so I get it the right width. Let's see our next piece. Ah, that wasn't long enough. I need a longer piece of painter's tape. Okay, smear 
smear that down really good. And because we used the baby wipe, it really, um, the paint dried really fast. So I'm able to like tape right over it. And it's working pretty good. Okay, so I'm just using this little guideline piece and I'm just moving it along here. Make sure it's all stuck down real good. And this is actually going faster than I thought it would. I was afraid this project, this uh, technique would take a long time, but it's pretty quick. Okay, this piece here is not sticking down the greatest. Maybe because I have this excess part hanging off here. It keeps sticking to the table. I'm trying to um, take deep breaths and not panic. Be careful reusing your tape. Make sure there's no paint on the sticky bark. Good point, Stacy. Right now, so far, everything's been great. Like, there's only paint on my fingers. But it's, um, I think it's because the baby wipe kind of dried the paint and it just dried really quickly. So that's not gonna be long enough. Let me grab one more new piece of paint. Or paint, new piece of tape. If you're just now hopping on, we are doing a red and black buffalo plaid technique using painter's tape. And I think it's gonna be my new favorite thing in the world ever. And then after we get done with the, if you missed the first part, we're gonna do it also on the present up here because this is going pretty smoothly. All right, get your old baby wipe you were using, dip it in just a little bit of black paint. Um, this, I think this part we're supposed to put on just a little thinner than the last part. So I'm just gonna really lightly, hang on, my painter's tape wasn't stuck down the best right there before I start swiping on it. So here we are just swiping on and trying to put it on a little thinner than we did the last time. Cause you want it to look kind of sheer. Tape keeps trying to come up. Perhaps I should have used a new piece of tape right there because that piece is not sticking down the best. If you feel like you're getting too much, you can always turn your baby wipe over to a new part and grab some more. Um, you know, like get a new piece of baby wipe. All right, I feel like it's not quite dark enough. So I'm gonna get just a little bit more paint. It's kind of hard going left and right across here to get it like. My tape keeps trying to come up. Maybe I need to go up and down instead of left and right. Why didn't y'all say something? <laughs> Sometimes I'm like making things way harder on myself than it needs to be. Okay, so on your second application, go up and down, not left to right. What was I thinking? And I got it a little bit on the wheelbarrow leg, but I really think that I can touch that up with gray. It's going to be fine. I need just a little bit more. Okay, moment of truth, because right now it looks like a hot mess. Is it gonna turn out okay? I think it is. We'll see. So far so good. There's only a couple places that look a little bit wonky. And I think we should might be able to take a baby wipe and clean those up. So let me get a clean corner of my little baby wipe here. And I'm gonna clean up, oh yeah. I'm able to clean up where it kind of bled underneath my tape right there. Let me see if there's, and then there's another little spot here. Give another clean corner. So you can just kind of wipe off what you don't want because the paint is still just slightly wet. I'm just continually getting a new clean part of the baby wipe so that it's effective. 
And I might even be able to clean up this little part where it got over here on the wheelbarrow leg. Well, it's not coming off completely, but it's pretty close. So I'll just paint over whatever I didn't get a fix of that. Just cleaning up a few little spots. Look at this baby wipe. Oh, it's been put through the ringer. Okay, I just have a few touch-up spots like where the paint got over. But here, let's take a look. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Oh, I think I probably should have gone a little darker on the bottom coat, the very first um, coat of painters like that I did with the painter's tape. But really, I mean, I think we could probably just throw down another line of painter's tape and go over it one more time so that it's a little darker. Does that make sense? So I'm going to put that, since this was only like two or three pieces of painter's tape, I'm just going to do it one more time the other way. So normally what you would do if you're doing this at home, your first coat, of, I've made my first coat of black a little too light. It needs to be a little darker. It's pretty neat. I mean, I'm, I'm actually really impressed with the results. I'm just being a little bit um, like OCD right now, wanting it a little darker. So I'm going to go back and put it a little darker on this direction. Okay, that's better. We're just gonna throw that in the floor. Okay, there we go. So it's a little darker now going the other way. I like it. All right, we're going to press on. Okay, let me touch up the gray that I got over here on the legs, which it needed a second coat anyways. I like this technique though. That was actually way easier than I thought it was going to be, and the painter's tape did a lovely job. So if you haven't tried buffalo plaid yet with painter tape, try that method with the baby wipes. I think that is the key, using the baby wipes. My hands, I've got paint all over them. Let me touch up my green. up the green over here. Okay. And now, um, let me think. Let me touch up the, well, I don't guess I really, I guess I can. I was trying to debate on whether or not to touch up the yellow, but I don't guess it really matters if I'm going to cover it with gold paint. Um, where's my hair dryer? We had a paint party here the other night and now everything is not where it's supposed to be. Um, it was like a party with um, family after our Thanksgiving meal Saturday night. And so nothing's where it's supposed to be. All right, we're going to do this little present up here at the top in the middle with white and black buffalo plaid. So let me do my taping off up here. I'm not going to use my little guideline tape in the middle. I'm just going to go for it because I'm impatient. We're just going to put that there. And then I probably need to cover up the edge of this present so that I don't get overlap all over my green present. tricky. This might be a bad idea. I don't know. We shall see. Okay. Baby wipes disappeared again. Oh, I, forget, I keep forgetting I put them down here. Okay. Let me get a new clean baby wipe. We're going to get some black paint. We're going to try to... Oh, I didn't even think about it. Hang on. We got to put another piece across here to protect that little area because that's going to be red. 
So this is probably more complicated than the actual wheelbarrow it has to be. So we're gonna protect that little area. We'll go ahead and put tape here to protect that area as well because that's gonna be red. We might as well just tape off everything we don't want black paint on. So, okay, we don't want it anywhere up there. <laughs> okay, got my black, my baby wipe, my black paint. I'm gonna try to remember the first coat needs to go on thicker than the first, than the second coat. It's hard to do though, because you, the more you wipe, the more it wipes off. Okay, let me stop before I get too ahead of myself. And then there's a little bit of a corner on the edge of this package here. And then there's a little bit in that little corner there, but I think I'm going to have to do that with a, a paintbrush because I can't get in there with my baby wipe. Okay, let's peel the tape up. Oh, I forgot there's a piece right there. black that will be white let's keep this white and the black along the top I'm trying to bear in mind that my painters tape might have wet black paint on it so I was trying to be careful and not get it all over me all right now I'm just taping off the areas that I don't want any paint to bleed over onto I don't want any here it's gonna be red don't want any there there and I'm just reusing all this painter's tape and let's see we don't want any oh hang on I think I did something wrong yes I did that doesn't go there that piece needs to go there and then <laughs> it's kind of like a puzzle you got to remember where what is supposed to be what color Okay, y'all just ignore me for a second while I figure this out. Like I need a new piece. Okay, I got it now. So this may look a little crazy, but I know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna get a little bit more black paint and this coat is gonna go on a little thinner than the last coat. So I'm gonna try to scrape off some of this excess here. Let me dab it and just see. So see how it's going on a little more sheer than the first coat that I did? Whoops, I accidentally dabbed it off of there. You want it to kind of go on like a really light gray. should have taped off the corner of that present because I'm having to avoid getting paint on it. All right. I think that's about as sheer as we can put it on. Big reveal time. Let's pull it off. Okay. Here's what the white and black buffalo plaid present looks like. It's kind of a mess right now, but I think it'll look fine when we get the red paint on there for the ribbon. So let's paint the red ribbon. Um, using painter's tape and baby wipes. I'm not usually very comfortable with painter's tape, so this is definitely out of my comfort zone, but it's a really cool technique and I love the end result, so I think I will be using it in the future. Um, this is not going to be the last time you see me using it, and hopefully I get better at it the more I do it. 
because I was a little messy this time. And it could just be because I was a little nervous doing it on Facebook Live in front of people doing something I'm not very comfortable doing. Okay. I'm running out of red paint here. There we go. Is that all? Oh, shoot. That's supposed to be red. And here I have painted. I'm going to have to repaint over it white in order to get it to turn out right because it's going to look um, funny. I knew something looked wrong over here and I couldn't figure out what it was. So I'm going to have to paint it white and then paint red over the white because the black will show up underneath the red. All right, we'll come back and fix that. This is going to be a mess for right now. Okay. Since our yellow is dry, let's go ahead and paint the gold where the yellow is at as our top coat. Um, let's see, what kind of brush do I want to use? I guess I'll use the same one I've been using. Um, this is the DecoArt Metallics paint. The color of this one is, I forgot what the name is. It's Vintage Brass. So that's a pretty metallic gold. I wanted it to look like metallic ribbon, gold ribbon. So that's why I painted the gold or the yellow, golden yellow underneath kind of as a base coat because sometimes this paint can be just a little bit sheer. So rather than do like three coats of the metallic gold, um, I'd rather do one cold coat of the golden yellow first. I really do like how the red and black buffalo plaid turned out though. The white and black still lacks some to be desired, but I think once I get it cleaned up, it'll be fine. This is at one of those points where when you're painting a door hanger and you're like, oh, I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out and you start to kind of panic. Sometimes if you don't panic and you just keep, just keep painting, kind of like Dory and Finding Nemo, just keep swimming. If you just keep painting and you just keep pushing forward, a lot of times you'll be much happier with the end result. That's kind of the way it was yesterday when I was decorating my Christmas tree. I started to panic a little bit and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like how this is turning out. I was trying a new technique with my ribbon. Um, and partway through, I'm like, oh, this is looking terrible. But I'm like, nope, we're just, we're just going to keep on pushing forward. We're going to completely finish it before we decide we hate it. And a lot of times that's all it takes is getting it completely finished before you just give up on it and decide you don't like it. Okay, now I've got gold paint all over my arm. All right, so we've got the gold on there. I wanted to do some polka dots on the green. So we might do that real quick with the darker Hauser green. This is the medium, medium Hauser green. So the base coat is the light Hauser green. And these polka dots are the medium Hauser green. And I'm just using the little one inch sponge pouncers like you get at Walmart. We're just gonna do some cute little dots wherever we can fit them. I'm trying to do them half on, half off. Let me get a little piece of paper so that I can do one half on and half off down here and not worry about getting it over the line. Do another one right here. There we go. Oh, and we need one right here. There we go. Okay, so this is what we got so far. Our little presents. We've got the gold. We gotta fix this present right here and then we can do our final touches. We rinse the same brush out for like the bajillionth time. Get some white paint. I'm gonna do a little bit of touch up on my white and black buffalo plaid. Just real quick. There we go. And do one more coat of red. 
And then once we add like all of our highlights and all that sort of thing, all of these imperfections that are bothering me right now, um, which you guys may not even be able to see on camera, shouldn't, shouldn't even be noticeable. What, like you won't pay any attention to them at all once you get all your other details on there. There we go, that's looking so much better. Okay, I need that little area to dry right there so I can paint it red. That's gonna take a minute, so we may go ahead and start doing some of our um, accent lines. Got some wild bristles in that one. I don't know if I'm gonna use that. I'm trying to find a round tip brush. Here we go, this'll work. All right, so get a round tip brush and some black paint. And just start doing some little quick lines like don't agonize over this part of it and just do like some cute little accents to kind of really make everything pop Let's see we can do some up here and I'm not trying to perfectly follow the outline of like the presence and the ribbon. I'm just trying to accent everything just a little bit. across here and then we'll do some to accent this present I like adding black because I think it makes all the other colors seem brighter and it kind of just like all these little details distract from any little imperfections that you've got <clears throat> okay I still gotta paint that little area red trying to wait for that white to dry. So I'm gonna use the same brush, rinse it out. I'm gonna get some white. And we're just gonna add some little white accents now. This is the fun part I feel like, is like adding these little fun snippets of white and black to make everything pop. All right, final, final thing. I'm gonna rinse my brush out real quick and get some red and fix this little spot where the red ribbon is supposed to go across. But I may have to just fix it after the video when the paint is really dry because I can't find my hair dryer at the moment. And it's gonna take more than one coat to fix that. So just imagine, <laughs> imagine that that little part right there is red and our ribbon is fixed. So here we go. And you could put Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, your name, whatever, down at the bottom. But I hope you enjoyed the little buffalo plaid tutorial, even though it was a little bit of a hot mess. But I did warn you at the beginning that it would be. So, all right. I hope you guys have a fantastic Thanksgiving. If you want to sprinkle the love, I would so much appreciate it if you share this. Because I know a lot of people need to know how to do this technique with the buffalo plaid and the baby wipes and the painter's tape. Um, it's definitely a game changer if buffalo plaid is hard for you. I want you guys to make sure to watch my page for your deals on Friday. We are going to have some of the best deals we've ever had on templates and um, a little deal on blanks. So if you will, make sure and check back on Friday and do your shopping then. I hope you guys have a fantastic Thanksgiving. Bye, y'all.